Yo, what's up squads? YouTube's been real strict with the community guidelines, so if you're over 18, you're cool. But if you're not, don't watch this. Welcome back to Rico Randy's Ranch. It's time for part 3 of the Purple Tie Auto Grow. Today we're going to cover the harvesting and processing of the Purple Tie Autos from Ethos Genetics. I'm also going to announce the winner of the current giveaway for the Seshgear Dabtron and start another one at the end of the video. If you want to see how these plants were vegged or flowered, check out part 1 and 2 of this grow series. After putting the plants in 48 hours of darkness to increase resin production, it's finally time to harvest. They require little trimming as most of the fan leaves have fallen off, so I'm just going to chop them at the base, clean them up, and hang the whole plant. I aim for a 7 to 14 day dry at 60 degrees Fahrenheit with 62% relative humidity. They are hung in complete darkness with air circulating, but don't blow air directly on the plants. Doing so will dry the bud too fast and a slow dry is the difference between okay weed and top shelf flower. A word of caution, even great weed can be ruined if the drying and curing environment gets out of control. Moisture is constantly being drawn from the inside of the nug outwards, where it evaporates into the surrounding air causing the humidity to rise. If there are extreme fluctuations in humidity, you're inviting fungal spore germination to occur. Too high of a humidity level causes bud rot or mold. Too low of a humidity level and the flowers will dry too quickly. Another concern is not letting the temperature go above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, as terpene degradation occurs at those levels and above. The more terpenes that are retained in flower, the more flavorful and better aroma you will have when it comes time to smoke. Now in order to get that top shelf flower, we have to be diligent in managing the drying environment. Drying them right in this 2x4 makes it easy to do that, since it's in a room with an air conditioner, humidifier, and dehumidifier. All these units keep the environment on point and I monitor everything using a sensor push. It allows me to check the temperature, humidity, and VPD in real time on my phone. On day 7, I start inspecting the plants to see if they're done drying. It takes anywhere from 7 to 14 days based on several factors, plant and branch size, moisture content, and environment. The flower is done drying and ready to cure when the stems snap and don't bend. Don't worry if your flowers don't have the same pungent smell they did right when you harvested. That's to be expected, and the strong cannabis aroma will return after properly curing. However, if you rush the drying and curing process, you can easily ruin all of your hard work so far. When cannabis is harvested, it's still living. An enzyme called THCA synthase is breaking chlorophyll down into metabolites, and the floral tissue is still biosynthesizing those metabolites into THCA. That means that the THC content is still rising after harvest. If you dry too quickly or at temperatures or relative humidities that are suboptimal, you can stop the post-harvest THC accumulation. If you've ever had weed that didn't smell like anything or smelled like hay, that was from improper drying. There will also be unwanted residual sugars and starches that haven't been broken down. This will affect the flavor, making the smoke harsh and taste like plant matter. Smoking too much chlorophyll from those uncured leaves or buds can make you sick. All of these factors contribute to low potency, changes in aroma and flavor, and the overall quality of the weed. The next step is trimming the flower. I remove the sugar leaves and stems, always trimming with the scissors angled this way and not cutting into the nug. This helps keep the shape of the nug and makes for better bag appeal. For most home growers, a trim bin is helpful and can catch falling trichomes. I collect all the trimmings to process them into rosin at a later time. You'd be shocked how much rosin you can get from the shape of just one grow. Now that the flowers have been dried and trimmed, they are ready for curing. Curing properly gives aerobic bacteria the time to digest the chlorophyll metabolites and other sugars for smoothness. We do not want anaerobic bacteria going to work here, as that will result in an ammonia smell and rotten flowers. If you do smell ammonia, that typically means that the flowers haven't fully dried. You should give the aerobic microbes a bit of a boost here by giving them more oxygen. This is what's called burping your flowers. 
Opening up your sealed container will reintroduce oxygen into the environment to assist the metabolism of those sugars. For the first week of cure, the flour should be burped once to twice per day. After the first week, your flour will only require a good burping every other day or so. However, you can skip burping entirely if you cure in Grove bags. They are a passively self-regulated atmospheric packaging. Grove bags control humidity, have antimicrobial properties, and maintain low oxygen levels to form the perfect climate for curing and storage. They help with weight retention, mold prevention, and terpene preservation. I used to use mason jars, but I get the same quality without having to burp them daily, and I don't have to worry about mold. They also protect from UV rays, so I can store my bud in them for long periods of time without them degrading like they do everywhere else. Even dispensaries have bad storage practices, which is why a lot of the time their bud is dry, and when you break it up, it crumbles into dust. They use turkey bags or clear jars with plastic lids that let in UV rays and air. And usually it's stored in a vault that's not climate controlled. Whichever method you go, if you want peace of mind knowing what your temperature and humidity is, get these mini hygrometers. You can buy them for about a dollar each and throw them in the jar or bag, and you'll be able to know your exact curing climate. At long last, the weed is ready after a month of curing. We can finally enjoy our harvest, and boy do I love these. They look, smell, and taste great, and I was really surprised by one thing that I'll get into later. You can tell these purple tie autos are homogenized well, because there isn't a lot of phenotype trait variation. There are two distinct traits amongst all the purple ties I've grown so far. The plants either fade to a hard purple with bright orange hairs, or they stay a bright green, showing an indigo hue. The phenotypes that stayed bright green smelled and tasted like creamy blueberry flowers. Very fruity, very floral. Great flavor, and I actually ended up smoking the entire plant rather than pressing it like I did with the rest. It was that good. Here's the thing that surprised me. The phenotypes that fully faded to purple, the ones that looked the best in my opinion, did not taste as good as the others. I was shocked because the spicy aroma was almost too intense and overpowering, like incense. I think a contributing factor was the anthocyanins, the pigments that make the bud purple. In food, anthocyanins have no flavor, but they do give an astringent or bitter taste. In this case, the purple phenotypes were insanely spicy and lacked any of the sweetness that was found in the other phenotypes. They were more like a juniper berry, piney, peppery, spicy, but they were very aromatic and they pressed into some really nice dabs. Alright squaws, I know you've been waiting a long time, so here's a sneak peek of some of the other grills I've filmed in the meantime and have yet to edit. These include our Ethos Citral Glues, which grew over 10 feet tall in an outdoor garden, and a second run of the Purple Tie Autos. It was absolutely fantastic walking through this, it felt like a jungle. I'd also like to announce the next giveaway, which will be for a Blue Labs pH pen. To enter the giveaway, just comment what strain you want me to grow next down below. Oh, and make sure you're following all my socials. All the links are in the description. And without further ado, congratulations Franklin, you won the Seshgear Dabtron. Just hit me up on any social media and I'll send it to you ASAP. Peace out, squaws.